So we have left the little town of Huayanca this morning and we are climbing up into Canyon del Pato, which is a very narrow gorge. And we're going through an amazing series of little tunnels with, with views that are just unbelievable. mountains here, they redefine the word rugged to me. We're in the heart of the Andes and it's most rugged and it is just amazing. We are in Caraz, in the main square where we are looking for Jason, who is in the hostel above the chicken restaurant. And with Jason going down, one of the best riders in the world and one of, you know, one of my closest riding friends, um, it really does uh, put a new, it frames things in a new perspective. And I'm, take, I'm running it up an extra gear, 35 miles an hour, third, fourth gear, whatever it is, just chugging along and slow and steady. Slow and steady will get you there. All right, off to the town square then. That's a great picture of it. Well, we're about to go see Jason. Get an update on how he's doing. There he is, man. Oh, fuck. We were going down the asphalt road and they have these they're probably about, I would say, a car length wide. Concrete ditches for water drainage, I'm sure. Came down, it hit it, it, fucked, it bucked me. Threw my back wheel and then it threw me into a ditch. And if, I don't know where my foot broke. I don't know if it was on the tumble. I don't know if it was in the ditch. I kind of grinded the, the back wheel on the on the edge. Yeah. And when it popped up finally, it kicked me and it landed it sideways on the asphalt. Oh, just oh, fuck. So, What's up, man? But I'll tell you, I want to just, our whole crew <laughs> has done awesome. They're awesome for us, man. We're gonna miss you, man. No, they, <laughs> they get there. And... Pablo, Chris, it's hard, hard to say, but it sucks the truth's gonna end. Especially yeah. this. You guys, just just learn, man. Just be safe. These roads, these roads aren't like Phoenix or Arizona, the states. There's just tricky shit everywhere. <laughs> we came in. Got, they didn't charge you anything? No, zero. It's a public hospital. Just for the medicine, two bucks, two dollars, for the consultation, for all the treatment, everything. Wow. We'll carry on, and uh, we'll take Jason with us in spirit. He'll be celebrated the whole way, and there's no doubt in my mind. And uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna miss him a lot for sure. He's a big part of the reason I'm here. It's gonna to be tough. You know, we, we talk all day long in the in the in the, in the scenas and, and um, you know talk a lot about my life and raising a daughter and, and the riding together. I mean, he's my he's my wingman, so it's gonna be uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But all part of the story and part of adventure and part of the growth that you have through such a journey like this that is so fast and so rapid. Um, you know, one day to the next, you just don't know what you're into. And so a broken ankle on an epic trip, yeah, it's sad, it sucks, it hurts. But on the grand scheme of things, man, we're all, we're all doing well. So it's all good, man. Life is good. We're good. The bonds we're making, the friendships we're making, the tragedies we're going through is all part of the ride, man. It's all part of the ride, and it's beautiful. So we're in a little town called Guaraz, um, talking about and making a plan to ascend Punta Olimpica, which is one of the kind of the bucket list things that we had identified as super cool adventure riding for this trip. Um, the weather up there doesn't look really good right now, so we're uh, kind of anticipating and not really knowing what we're getting into right now. I think we've got some frazzled nerves, including mine probably. 
Well, you know, we're trying to keep a pace, trying to balance everybody's needs. Not everybody's the same rider. Some go fast, some go slow. Want to take photographs, some want to explore the archaeology, some don't. Some want to make a movie, and that's sort of part of the whole promise for the deal. And all those things don't, we're trying to get five pounds into a two pound bucket, basically. I think we have to figure out what to do about it. Our group is a little scattered, discombobulated. We've had some communication breakdown, I think would be a mild way to put it. We've got um, Chris Van Dyke, you guys hung you at the gas station. We're downtown Makara. From Colin, come back to Kawaz. We blew past the van. From Chris Van Dyke, we're on our way. And then from Colin, I will head to Oraz. I'm not feeling on top of my game today. See you guys later. Things are starting to break down a little bit. I think we need to come back together, have some conversation, and uh, figure out how we're going to move forward as a community and as a team. Given that we've had some challenges with group riding in the past, we're going to have a little meeting before we head up. We are absolutely going to stick together. It'll be a tight group. We're going to communicate constantly. We'll stop occasionally, make sure everybody's doing all right. Uh, but we're going to stay together on this one. But I'd like to throw in the hat that I would really like to take the off-road route over that pass. That's something I desire. If we had started off early enough in the day without these other challenges, yeah. I'd have been all over it. But at yeah, this point in time, it's one in the afternoon. We'll stay on paved as much as we can. We'll get as high as we can. We'll explore that dirt leg that comes in on this side and call it good. So let's uh, let's find a little bit by team. Let's get the hell up there. Let's see what it is. And I, I believe we're about to hit the tunnel because I see a whole lot of earth that has been moved out. Punta Olimpica. Well, here we are. We've entered on the high side of Punta Olimpica, the highest tunnel in the world. And somewhere on the other side is uh, a little dirt road that goes over the top. So now <clears throat> we have climbed above the tunnel. There is the tunnel right there. And look, there's the pass that goes over the top. We are going to go up a little bit further. This is beyond freaking cool. 15,000, 516, and climbing. Oh, jeez. Look at this. Well, Paso de San Francisco is a little higher, but this, this is uh, pretty, pretty damn rugged. Wow. Oh, magnificent. There's Tiberio. Yeah, buddy. Perfect. Okay, carrying on. Really lightheaded, short of breath. You just, any exertion and you start struggling and breathing hard, but wow. Man, moments like this make all of the pain and the agony of putting together a trip like this worthwhile. Punta Olimpica is over the top. Peaking Punta Olimpica on the, on the backside, I think we could agree that that was one of the most magnificent views of the trip, for sure, on the other side. That is majestic. Riding in Lima at rush hour, man, it's game on. And you've got to get it up to want to do it. It's about five o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon and we're dealing with your typical rush hour commute. There's a message from Colin and he called Lima a hundred miles slum. It's definitely the dirtiest country we've been in so far. There's nothing that any of us would consider housing for a hundred miles. We have no idea about how low down the economic ladder you got to go to get to the bottom in some of these countries. Hey, anybody seen Jorge? <laughs> Jorge's in the back. I think. Are you still back there, Jorge? Yes, I am here. Okay. <laughs> so we made it to BMW Motorrad Peru. What did you think about that drive through Lima? Man, I just can't tell you how excited I'm going to be to get back on my motorcycle. They're cleaning my bike. I can't believe it. They cleaned it so good they took the paint right off the crash bars. Smell. What can you tell me of this clutch? Oof. That's got, that's got some good miles on it. Back on the road, back on my bike, Expedition 65 continues. Let's get the hell out of Lima. 
Today is a really special day because it's the first day of riding with my girlfriend. The last time I was in South America was just over a year ago. I was in Colombia filming a 40 day episode of Naked and Afraid. She don't make you eat a snake. I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> you all would be really, really nice to Eva. You're going to find that she's one of the coolest gals on earth. It is beyond an honor to be a part of the Expedition 65 team, and it's just a matter of figuring out where's my place in the group. And so I'm hoping that I can just bring some positivity and some freshness and have some fun with the whole thing. I'm riding the coolest motorcycle. It's a Honda XR650L carbureted, it's a thumper, and it is tons of fun. Rush hour traffic, Lima, morning commute. There's the van up ahead of us. How's your rush hour commute going? Awesome. <laughs> we left the congested traffic clogged streets of Lima this morning and we've covered about 300 miles and gained almost 15,000 feet of elevation in the process. And it's absolutely amazing the transition in the landscape and the ecology during that time. I have never been on a ride like this before. Like the last 48 hours is some of the most incredible motorcycling I've ever done in my life. We've made it back up to higher elevation. We're riding at 14,500 feet now. And it's an amazing landscape of rocks and alpine grasses. There are llamas on the road, actually in the road. Sometimes you have to ride with care. We have experienced every type of road. Generally speaking, they're, they're investing in infrastructure. For all we think about them as third world developing countries, developing means they're doing development. So I think all over the place we've seen roads that have gone from being just absolutely horrible, which we like riding on because they take us to interesting places, to first rate Swiss style hairpins through the mountains. We've seen everything. The Peruvian roads, we've been trying really, really hard to find a straight road. We're not finding any. I love roads like this that are twisty and smooth with good views in every direction and lots of things to look at. Farmers tilling their fields, animals, livestock. It's really colorful, the weather's fantastic and it's just a beautiful day to be riding a, a GS in a place like Peru. Last night we uh, stayed in a town called Ayacucho. You couldn't drive from Ayacucho to Cusco, where we're going next, on tarmac roads until 2014. There was a period when Ayacucho was, you know, occupied by communist terrorist rebels. So I'm sure that didn't incentivize the government to build great infrastructure. But um, so it's you know slow in coming. But yeah, some of these towns are were not connected till very recently. The van got to the camp before we did. We rolled in at a decent hour. We were able to set our tents up in the in the daylight. Oh, the camping setup is actually phenomenal. There's a the fold-out table that comes uh, with the trailer. It's got a, a sink with hot water. It's got a three-burner stove. There's an awning on the trailer itself that will fold out, give us some shelter from sun and rain. Uh, we have a couple extra stoves and pots and pans, and it's actually a pretty sweet setup. We measured on latitude, we've done 22 and a half degrees out of 65, so we're 43, 4, 5 ish. We have half a hemisphere to go. We are miraculously heading today into Cusco on the day we wanted to head into Cusco, and the only reason that is is because we've got other people, friends, family, wives joining us for two or three days in Cusco. I've pulled in a whole bunch of the members of uh, Team Rawhide from California and Colorado. We're all heading for Machu Picchu for the day. Machu Picchu is absolutely one of the bucket list experiences uh, in the world. It's uh, a world heritage site and probably one of the top three attractions in the world behind the, the pyramids and the Great Wall of China. Perfect. 
Awesome. Ever since you started talking about the E65 coming to Machu Picchu, it's like playing in the it's like playing in the uh, in the parking lot of the Fillmore or something. Right? Playing music with Owen, whenever we have a gig, it gives me something to look forward. Owen is the most talented musician I've ever played with. Heading out of Cusco this morning. Looking forward to this day of riding with the Rawhide team. I think there's about 23 motorcycles total today on the road. It's going to be awesome. Well, the last 48 hours have been pretty interesting. We left Cusco with the intention of more or less staying together as a group, but uh, that didn't work out so well. Up at 16,000 feet as we came into Chive, which was our goal for the day yesterday. It was 24 degrees when I came through at like 7.30 at night. Today, we're on our way from Chive to a place called the Colca Canyon. Colca Canyon makes the Grand Canyon look like a little, uh, a little gash in the dirt. Uh, Colca Canyon is the second deepest place on Earth. Um, the deepest place is not far away from Colca Canyon, but it's much less accessible. So we're gonna settle for Colca um, there's a big overlook there that uh, we're going to just go appreciate the power of nature when a river can just cut through, you know, thousands of feet of stone and make the biggest, the biggest canyon on earth. Seeing all of these terraced fields in the background and just a guy with a donkey and a couple bulls come by with an old style cut from a tree plow. And it just made me realize that the, the people here are connected to the earth in the way that humanity has been for thousands of years. And partly it's because they can't afford technology, but on the other hand, they're comfortable with their way of life. And it's pretty remarkable to see how, how people live here. A little bit of night riding for Expedition 65. Tonight's one of those nights as we head into Puno. Our last night in Peru, tomorrow we'll cross the border. The last 17 days since we entered Peru have been a blur now. Peru started getting hard and we started feeling some of the pressures of Peru. I've lost track of how many days it's been since we crossed from Ecuador into Peru. It's a relief, it's a mental relief. I don't think we are a team. I think we're a bunch of guys on the same tour. We're all heading to the same place, but we don't always end up in the same place. Every person on this ride, for different reasons and different factors in their lives, came to the conclusion that we gotta get out and do this stuff. Can't wait for the next half of this trip because this is the part that I really signed up for. To see that kind of come to an abrupt end for, for, for Jason was really, really heartbreaking. It's a real mixed bag of highs and lows uh, for Peru, but that's part of this game. 